Light is a form of energy that comes from, among other places, stars. In the cores of stars, fusion reactions take place combining hydrogen nuclei into helium nuclei with the release of an enormous amount of energy. Much of this energy eventually makes its way into space in the form of electromagnetic radiation. This radiation consists of radio waves, microwaves, infrared, visible light, ultraviolet, x-rays and gamma rays. We can see just a small part of this electromagnetic spectrum due to cells in our eyes that perceive only visible light. In the 1600s, Isaac Newton showed that sunlight consists of all the colors of the rainbow. We now know that these colors are visible electromagnetic radiation corresponding to certain wavelengths, frequencies and energies. If we order the colors by these properties, we get the color spectrum. Red has the longest wavelength and the lowest frequency and energy, while violet has the shortest wavelength and the highest frequency and energy. Sunlight reaches the Earth and strikes all the materials in its path. Atoms in matter reflect, absorb or transmit the incoming sunlight depending on its energy. Atoms are made of a nucleus and surrounding electrons that occupy distinct energy levels. If the energy of the light reaching an atom equals the energy level differences in the atom, the light is absorbed. Otherwise, it's transmitted or reflected. The phenomenon of reflection determines which colors we see objects to be. For example, if light from the sun hits a red apple, this means that red light is the type that's mainly reflected and reaches our eye. Other colors transfer their energy to electrons in the atoms of the apple and are absorbed. Red light reflected from the apple reaches our eyes and so this is the color we perceive the apple to be. In general, the colors of substances and objects are determined by the colors they reflect. If a substance absorbs almost all the incoming visible radiation, no light is reflected from the substance and it will look black. On the other hand, if the substance absorbs very little and reflects almost all the colors, it will look white to us. There are cells in our eyes called cones that can perceive only red, green and blue light. The wavelength of red light, for instance, is between 620 and 750 nanometers. When red light strikes the back of our eyes, cells that perceive light of this wavelength generate electrical signals and send them to the brain. Our brain interprets the incoming electrical signals as red. So, how do we see other colors if we have cells that are sensitive only to red, green and blue light? For example, suppose we're looking at a yellow pencil. The only rays reflected from the pencil to our eyes are yellow, which has a wavelength of about 580 nanometers. When this yellow light reaches the cone cells, because it's similar in wavelength to both red and green light, it stimulates both red and green sensitive cells to a certain extent and generates a combination of electrical signals. When these signals reach our brain, the mixture gives rise to the mental impression of yellow. In the same way, all the colors of the rainbow can be produced in the brain from combinations of red, green and blue signals. The way our eyes work in this respect is reflected in our technology. Television, computer and cell phone screens are made of elements that give red, green and blue colors only. In addition to the cone cells in our eyes, there are also rod cells. Rod cells enable us to see even when there's not enough light to produce color vision. The eyes of animals that can see well at night have a greater concentration of rod cells.
When we examine the eyes of other living things, we find important differences. For instance, birds have five different cone cells, giving them the ability to perceive many more shades of color than we can. Honeybees can see in ultraviolet light, so a flower that to us appears plain white, but which also reflects ultraviolet, will look very different to a bee. Vision is an important sensory window on the world. The fact that our eyes and those of other animals differ so much means that there must be a great variety of views through that window.